This episode of I've Had It is brought to you by the new L'Oreal Paris Bright Reveal Dark Spot Serum and Broad Spectrum SPF 50 Daily Lotion. Dark spots, game over. So are we supposed to start the podcast? One, two, three. I'm just so much better at it when I don't look. I know, and that was like a real problem. Like a three in the clapper at the exact same time. Yeah. I kind of forced the clap into the three. You think I rushed it? I think you rushed the clap. <laughs> Just, do you want me to do it again? No. Because <laughs> the likelihood that you could do that two times in a row. With such force? Yeah. Would be rare. How are you, pumps? I'm great. How are you, Jenny? Great. I'm tired today. Which is unusual for you during the day. I know. I think I need to be exercising more. I know. I've been bad about exercise. Exercise gives me more energy. I know. Anyway, what have you had it with? What I've had it with, and this happened to me this morning. I mean, it happens regularly, but it just happened today. Is that when you send an email and you detail exactly what you need, mm -hmm. then you get a call back. And then you have to play phone tag with the person. And it's like, why can't you just answer the email? Because in the message, the person says, I got your email. So why are we having to have superfluous conversations when we can just answer all the questions? Boom, we're done. I think some people like grandstanding on the telephone. I just hate talking on the phone. I mean, I just can't. I hate it. I think people like grandstanding on the phone. Oh, I don't want a grandstander. I don't want a phone talker. So those are my two worst nightmares all at once. You know, Josh loves to like, if he's driving from point A to point B, he wants to keep me on the phone until he gets to point B. I know. And it's just, does he do that to you too? No, not really. Oh, I mean, he does it to me. It drives me fucking bananas. And it's just like, can we just not talk? Can we just talk when we, you get home? Can you text me? Yeah. There's just more efficient communication options these days. Agreed. I don't know why we don't use them. What have you had it with today, Jenny? I've had it with what I would call mainstreaming stupidity. <laughs> I would love to know the definition. Okay. So I'll give you an example. Okay. Um, Secretary Pete Buttigieg. Uh -huh. Pete is talking about climate change. Okay. So then this congressman says... Yeah, we're going through climate change right now. It's called autumn. <laughs> what a dumb fuck. And so then Pete Buttigieg, who's like a road scholar. Right. So smart. So Secretary articulate. Secretary of Transportation, yes. a very accomplished person. And he's taking this hearing very seriously because right. it's fucking serious. Right. It's his job. And this fucking schmohawk. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you. We're going through climate change right now. It's called autumn. And he thinks it's a burn. He thinks it's this real knee slapper. <laughs> you know, that he's a goddamn comedian. And Pete, like, incredulously looks at him and goes, excuse me? He goes, it's called autumn. And Pete's still, he's like, like, I'm going to give him one more chance. Right, maybe he didn't hear. And he said, I'm sorry, I'm not understanding. Autumn, that's what the climate change is right now. And then, of course, Pete's like, no, what you're talking about is a seasonal change. <laughs> what I'm talking about is climate change. And it's just like people want to mainstream and knee slap this fucking redneck, dumbass, low IQ humor. And I fucking had it. Like, why out of all the things to grandstand about, would you want to grandstand that you're a fucking dumbass? <laughs> If I was Pete, I would have said, listen up, dirt dick. <laughs> You're an idiot. You need to be impeached. I've had it. But of course, he's, you know, a gentleman. That's right. why he's in charge of things. And I'm not in charge of anything, not even right. this podcast, because you're the star. Well, of course. Because I would have mouthed off to that dirt dick. I mean, what an idiot. And just the fact that people vote for this political party that wants to mainstream stupidity and deny scientific research. Right. It just, it, it really... It makes me kind of sad and depressed. Yeah, it is depressing. What depresses me even more than that is that the truth doesn't matter. Facts don't matter. That's what is my biggest issue. I mean, it doesn't matter what the truth is, what the facts are. It's just lies, 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 and nobody seems to care. It's like fitting into their narrative. And right. it's like we used to value like intelligence and critical thinking 
and curiosity. And now it's like, I saw this other thing on social media the other day. These fucking dumbass dirt dicks had this huge pile of books. And then they had these like huge like blow torches. And they're spraying the books like with this big book ban. And they're just like, oh, yeah, fuck yeah. Like, and I'm just like, number one, you're so stupid. <laughs> number two, this is on video forever. And number three, it's been posted to the World Wide Web. And you're going to be the fucking dumbass, low IQ, dirt dick forever. Right. But I think that they're so dumb, they don't realize they're stupid. Yeah, it's it's just it's fascinating to me that so many people enjoy and then like knee slap like trafficking in low IQ shit. Especially when it's supposed to be serious. I mean, a congressional hearing, it's by nature supposed to be serious about policy. Right. Not about how stupid you are. Yeah. And then like, you know, getting, having a big fuck yeah moment because you burned, you know, some Disney books. Like fucking grow up. Grow up. It's called fascism. It is. Yeah. It's not cute. It is, counselor. It is called fascism. Yes. No, I know it's nuts. But anyway, I just, I think that the people are mainstreaming stupidity. Right. And- and then it's like, it's like contagious. <laughs> right. Like one of them's dumb. And then it's like all these others are like, yeah, well, I'm going to be a fucking dumbass too. And we can knee slap and chuckle and belly laugh and hoot and holler and just be dirt dicks together. I've had right. it with the dirt dicks. Had it with dirt dicks. Dumbass dirt dicks. Dumbass dirt dicks. Dumbass dirt dicks. That's what we're going to start calling the dumbasses. Dumbass <laughs> dirt dicks. Even females. Nobody's safe. <laughs> They're all dumbass dirt dicks. Marjorie Taylor Greene, dumbass dirt dick. I think that's too kind for her. I mean, I really do. I think Dumbass she's a, dirt dick. I mean, she's so vile. I think there's got to be something worse for there her. There probably is. But for now, I want to settle on dumbass dirt dick and I want you to give it to me. Okay, you can have Thank it. Thank you. Welcome to I've Had It. It's a high IQ day for myself. I'm Jennifer. Hi, I'm Angie. She is the pretty one and I'm the young one. <laughs> Listener, I want to share... Um, Pumps and my husband, Josh, and I went to lunch earlier today, and I just want to share something alarming. And this, if you're friends with Pumps, this kind of stuff comes out of her mouth all the time. So my husband uh, knows Pumps' ex-husband. Right. And they went to college together. And so my husband says, hey, how's your ex-husband doing? You ever hear from him? She goes, you know, that's funny. I woke up to a text from him this morning, and he told me that he had lost his iPhone, and he needed my iCloud login and password because he was still connected to it. And if I didn't give him my iCloud login and password, that he wouldn't be able to sign into his Instagram. Right. And I say to Pumps, please tell me you didn't give him your iCloud login and password. She goes, oh, I did. But I followed it up with a text, change the password after you log in and then delete it. And the Apple ID and delete mine. Yeah. I did. What are you going to do about your Apple ID? No, I said for him to get off my Apple ID. But you told him to change your password. No, I said, here's the password. Change and get your own Apple ID. But I don't think that... Kylie, does the Apple ID have anything to do with Instagram? I think this is a scam. I, None of that adds up. That's what I see. That's that what I think. The but Amazon I'm like, text all over again. <laughs> that's exactly what I think. And she poo pooed me at lunch, but I think he's up. I think he's reading her text right now. I don't give a shit if he reads my text. I mean, I have literally the most boring texts in the world. I don't care. I think it's fishy. I think you should be more vigilant. I think that with my security. Yes. You cannot give your fucking iCloud. Login and password to your ex-husband. Is your iCloud your Apple ID? Is that yes, all the same? I yes. See, I didn't know that. But I mean, I really don't care. You can have my Apple ID and password. I'm going to show you how to kick him off after this. Okay, perfect. That'd be great. Yeah, you shouldn't have done that. Yeah. I'm just not a big security person. I think you should just read your social right here on the air. Date of birth and social security number. <laughs> why, don't you give it? Like, why, don't, why don't you go ahead and just share your Apple ID with, with our, everyone? With our listeners and yes. your password. Yeah. I mean, Kylie, don't you find that alarming? Yes. As you were saying that, it was just like pumps. We just learned this. We talked about this. We learned it through the Amazon thing. Yeah. I mean, I don't know why it would scam me. Has he before? Well, I mean, my marriage vows, starting with that all the way through. And you did willingly divorce him, correct? Yeah. 
I'm calling bullshit. I don't think he was on your Apple ID. It has nothing to do with your Instagram. I think he's up to no good. And as usual, I will crack the case. (laughs) I will be the whistleblower. And then you'll be like, I know I should have listened to you. I'm just too trusting. And here we are all of these years later and zero growth on this front on your part. (laughs) All this therapy, tens of thousands of dollars. And all these investigations, all this shit that we go through when you just blindly via text message, hand over your Apple ID and password to your ex-husband. Yeah, I think he was on my Apple Music at some point. So maybe that's what it was. I don't know. It said Instagram. I don't really care. We need to do like a red flag seminar. Yes. I'm the worst. I'm the worst about red flags. Here's the deal. You don't care about this stuff and then it happens and then shit happens. And then you're like, oh my God, I was so dumb. I'm here trying to help you right now. (laughs) Avoid this. And you're poo-pooing it, being dismissive. Like, oh, you're just so, couldn't be bothered by any of this. Despite, literally, I think we hear constantly, daily, do not give your Apple ID login and password to people. And I would think at the top of the list for Apple would be, don't give it to your ex fucking husband. (laughs) You're totally right. You're a goddamn divorce lawyer. If you had a client that called you and said, my husband has hacked in and gotten in all of these texts and he's creating this big shit storm for me. Don't say I don't have any texts. Don't even say that. And then you would say, well, how did he get in? Well, I gave him my login and password. You would immediately call me and say, listen to what a dumb fuck my client is. Yeah, that's probably right. Yeah. I mean, I can't argue it. I just didn't think one thing about it at the time until you just said that. You didn't think anything about, quote unquote, Amazon texting you at 3.30 a.m. for your social security number. I did think enough to ask Kylie later, like early that morning. And we, she did tell me. But I mean, I'm looking at your face right now and I realize it's a huge mistake. Yeah, I've got a face of disappointment, listener. It is. It's a huge disappointment face. I think the listeners are sharing (laughs) in this disappointment. I think anybody with a fucking pulse, with the exception of you, would find this information alarming as fuck. You do not give this shit out to people or your ex-husband in particular. Yeah, particularly, probably. Yeah. Well, lesson learned. I'll have Kylie make sure it's all square when we leave. Can you kick, can you can we see if he's logged in? Yeah, you can kick people off. Can we see if like, if he's logged into her text messages? No, we'll just see if he's logged into the Apple ID. Because you can get text messages. Yeah, he could now send messages through Apple ID. As you. You probably have Apple Pay in there, your email. Oh, I do have Apple Pay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was just a really, and here's the thing. Here's what's so jarring about this entire thing is that we're trying to convince you that you're a dumbass. (laughs) I'll admit it. And you literally are just kind of like, I don't care. Yeah, I just, let me ask you this. How many lessons do you have to learn with this motherfucker to get it? Oh my God, I think we're in the infinity range. Right. So you're just going to keep going just. Yeah. No, I just Exercising insanity with this. Yeah. What's the definition of insanity? Doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. Yeah. I just, I mean, I really didn't until I saw your face and Kylie's face think it was that big of a deal. Because I think he was on my Apple Music for some reason. Apple Music is different from your Apple ID and it has nothing to do with Instagram. The story stinks to high heaven, a first red flag. And I bet he was texting you from his iPhone that he did not lose. Yeah. What time did you receive this text? I think it was like 10 or 11. I was already in bed. Okay. And then I text. I just texted it back because I was like, I'll just text it. I think a scam is in full swing right now. Okay, Kyle, you'll have to to look for the scam traps. Your high IQ episode, yeah, is just gone. gone. <laughs> yeah, it started off with what dumbass dirt dicks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm just a dumbass. Uh huh. You're I'll not s- a dirt dick though. You're not a dirt dick. We'll just call you dumbass. Star of the show. Speaking of high IQ, let's hear it. I've got some comments just for Jen. Okay. Oh, good. Okay. This is an Apple review for five stars titled Jen, the patron saint of podcasts. Oh, oh, that's nice. Jen doesn't receive enough praise and adoration. Not to mention she doesn't have a proper title yet. I hereby decree Jen as the patron saint of podcasts 
Thank you for all you do and all you are. Oh, I love that. The patron state of podcasts. The and I don't receive enough no praise. Credit. You know why? Why? Because you are such a thirst trapping star of the show. You just hogging it all <laughs> away from me all the time. Yeah. I'm just a <laughs> real star hawker. That's very nice. That is nice. That's really sweet. I've got one more that okay. only you would like. Okay. It's on YouTube and they commented, these old girls are the funniest in the world right now. Why? They just say the truth. And the bony one is hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for calling me bony. Thank you for sharing that. That's quite a compliment. It is. Thank you very much. Yeah. All right. Well, listener. Sorry to bring down the IQ of the episode. Yeah. That is, I'm telling you, this is alarming. <laughs> stuff and I'm glad I knew Kylie I waited to bring it up while, until we recorded because I knew you would freak out being the millennial that you are that you would hear about this egregious security lapse on Pumps's part and I to me this one is worse than the Amazon lapse yeah an ex-husband is much more dangerous <laughs> yes and she's a fucking divorce lawyer <laughs> hire Pumps attorney at law <laughs> <laughs> She'll get your password right over to For your For the ex. safest divorce you could have. Okay, listen up, listener. We have a big day today. Um, we have a comedian and actress that Pumps and I absolutely love. So let's welcome to I've Had It, Margaret Cho. Pumps, this is going to irritate you to no end when I share this with you. What is it? L'Oreal is helping me become a better pickleball player. How's that? Their sunscreen. The SPF 50 Daily Lotion, I put it on before I play pickleball, and I've been using it every day. At night, then I put on the Dark Spot Serum, and I don't have to worry at all about my skin. I can go all chips in on every shot I take and being the best athlete I can possibly be while not neglecting my skin. Two birds, one stone. 100% of dark spots are intensified by the sun. The Bright Reveal SPF 50 Daily UV Lotion is a lightweight and non-greasy sunscreen that has an invisible texture and it primes well with makeup so you can stay protected every day. So when paired together, this derm validated duo visibly reduces the look of dark spots in just a week. Discover the new Bright Reveal Dark Spot Duo. Visit Target online and in store to buy yours today. 1000% we bought into the skims hype, bit the bullet, got the bras, got the panties, completely converted, totally worth the hype. It's so soft and so cozy. I love all of their products. So recently we thought, let's try out their cotton stuff. I absolutely am obsessed with their rib tanks. And I also bought these little boy shorts and tanks that I wear for pajamas. I do too. And then you can wear the tanks under blazers. I'm telling you guys, the cotton is to die for. Comfortable. Skims is the real deal. They make loungewear into dresswear. You can wear Skims 24-7. We are obsessed. Believe the hype. Skims has over 100,000 five-star reviews for a reason. The cotton collection and more are available now at skims.com. Plus, get free shipping on orders over $75. If you haven't yet, be sure to let them know that we sent you. After you place your order, select podcast in the survey and select our show, I've Had It, in the drop-down menu that follows. Margaret Cho, how are you? Welcome to I've Had It. Thank you. How are you? Very well, thank you. We're good. Glad you're here. Well, before we got you on here, we were talking about... Um, Pumps, uh, Angie here, Pumps recently, her ex-husband emailed <laughs> her and said, hey, I'm locked out of my old iCloud and I need it. And she's a divorce attorney, Margaret. She just willingly sent over her Apple ID and <laughs> password to her ex-husband. So I've been browbeating her about that for about the last 15 to 20 minutes as, as her producer, Kylie. But I noticed on your list of things that you've had it with is along this same vein, which are scam emails. And right. I think Pumps has kind of set herself up for <laughs> quite a few scams that are yet to be determined. But listen up, listener, I will reveal each and every transgression on the podcast should, should they surface. But what's going on with your scam emails? Well, I get the ones that disguise the email as somebody that I am very intimately connected with yes. somebody that I know well who would send me a link. Right. I received one of those from a, a really a friend that I know pretty well. And it was like, hey, 
I am traveling and I need some help and you're the only email address that I happen to have saved. And so it kind of, it made sense. And mm-hmm. so I respond like, yeah, hey, it's nice to hear from you. Do you want me to find like, is there some information I can find for you? Because I was slightly suspicious, but yeah, it's amazing how clever the email scams are getting. I mean, Pumps is absolutely perfect prime target for this. All it took for her to give her Apple ID to her ex-husband was one email and she just woke up the next morning willingly sent, here's the ID, here's the password, send it over. No questions asked whatsoever. Uh, You know, I've I've had issues before during the pandemic. I I wanted to uh, buy a cat and I got scammed out of a couple thousand dollars because the way that they framed it was like, oh, this cat's available. You got to get to work on now. Like you, we, we, you know, we've got to get rid of this cat right now. We, we, you know, we really need you to do this. And, you know, could you just go to CVS right now and get some gift cards? And I was like, it was really late at night. It, it was during the pandemic. I didn't know, I didn't have an ability to contact like my accountant to ask if this right. is usually I talk to my accountant and ask if something like this would work out. I was like, they they try to get you so fired up. They were sending the cutest pictures <laughs> of this cat. <laughs> I really couldn't resist. I mean, they really, and that's just so insidious to use your love of animals. Totally. totally. To try to get you, you know, but then they kept like, so the reason I sent the money, you know, through via these um, gift cards. And then when the cat was supposed to arrive via courier, courier, um, the courier called and said, well, uh, we need a special carrier because we're having some weather. So we need you to purchase this carrier and we'll pay you back when you get the animal, you know, when we drop it off. And so that's when I was like, this is a scam, right? <laughs> obviously. <laughs> right. Because they knew that I was good for this amount of money. Now they're going to keep it going. It, it's like kind of the intimacy of your phone, but also when they kind of get in there with those like little fishing things, then they can find out some things about you. Like you love cats. Which right. I, I have many cats now, so you don't have to buy them. And this oh, is a dog. I was going to say, that looks like a dog. <laughs> hey, this is a dog. But that is she, a cute dog. She is a good, good, good Which girl. Which brings you, me to something else that you've had it with. And let's talk about the etiquette of owning a dog and what we have to do when we own a dog. When you have a dog, you have to pick up their poo-poo. <laughs> and let's say, okay, this is the exception. If it's in your own yard. Right. Then it's your, it's up to you. Right. If you like to have Dookie in your yard, that's your business. Right. Um, But when you go to a public park or anywhere in the street, you have to pick up after your dog. Right. So I know that there's a condo that now asks for your dogs, uh, a sample of it so they could do a DNA test. So they (laughs) DNA test all of the errant poos. And they can identify whose dog it was if they live in that I complex. love that. That's good uh, stuff. You would get evicted. No, I didn't. <laughs> even if you didn't know, even if they didn't do it, it's a great deterrent. For sure. It's an excellent deterrent. Plus, I'm sure they would stick you with the DNA testing cost, which I think is exorbitant. Right. Well, see, she's getting on to me because one time I was taking my dog. I take my dog on a walk every day. He takes a big, giant, steaming poop because he's 95 pounds and he shits like a grown man. So I'm just like, I don't think I have it in me today. So the mm-hmm. next day I picked it up. I've done that one time. And then one time I didn't have enough fat. He did it three times. And I picked up the first two because I had bags. And I'd, once I'd walked him back, I got in the car and went and did the poop. But it's just that one time I just left it for 24 hours. I know that's a bad pet owner, but I did go you know, pick it up. It happens. You And you picked it up later. Yeah. That's the thing. It's like, it doesn't, I mean, it's, everybody's had that thing where they've run out of bags or maybe it's too wet to pick up. Yeah. That's happened. Or um, maybe you're just in a rush and you just can't, whatever it is. We all have those exceptions. I'm just talking in general. Like my wish is it just ruins the street for me. It ruins the park for me when I see like a lot of it. I, the exception is, was sometimes I think it's human. (laughs) <laughs> and then I'm like, well, you know, well, and here's the deal. I don't think it's setting a good example for your pet. 
<laughs> I mean, your pet yeah. wants to see you be a good person. Your pet right. needs for you to be a responsible, good person. And so I wouldn't do that, not only to other people, but most importantly, Margaret, I wouldn't do that to my dog. I wouldn't leave his shit out there mm-hmm. in public because that would be not being good to him or his privacy. <laughs> right. You know, right. he doesn't need his shit laid out there for everybody to see it. Literally. Well, yeah. every dog to come and smell it. That's right. <laughs> That's and right. I know what he ate I respect, and what he's doing. I respect my dog. Therefore, I pick up its shit because I don't want to embarrass my dog. Right. Well, You're so right. It's true. Okay. Mm-hmm. Speaking of shit, Margaret, we have covered quite extensively the incident that happened on Delta Airlines mm-hmm. where the person had explosive diarrhea um, in, it, on, in route to Barcelona. And I saw that you yourself have had an experience with diarrhea on an airplane, if you could share that with us. You know, I had it, I'll tell you exactly when I had it, and it was an American (laughs) Airlines flight, and I was coming home from Leslie Jordan's funeral, not funeral, it was his uh, celebration of life, Okay, who's a good friend of mine. So it was Nashville to Los Angeles, relatively short flight, like three and a half hours, and I was sitting thankfully in the aisle. Um, and I kept getting up, you know, it's suspicious when you g- get up more than three times during a flight. <laughs> Agreed. <Not sure. laughs> it's a red, but line. I didn't have, yeah, I didn't have that option. Like I just had to keep getting up. I had to keep getting up every time I go back to my seat, I'd find more, more was revealed <laughs> about my condition and I had to keep getting up. And um, (laughs) pretty soon I realized it wasn't just the diarrhea, but it was just gas accompanied it. So that it was like coming out and I couldn't, you know, there there was nothing I could do. It was coming from also every time I would go, I would leave a little bit in the air walking by. (laughs) So I crop dusted my own plane. And and, um, pretty soon the people around me, no started to suspect there's something wrong with the plane it smelled so (laughs) mainly bad like it was like this is not from a person this is coming from the plane like this is there's something wrong with the plane you know should we land it was like really and they were asking the flight attendant you know what, what do you think is going on with the plane and i just really um i put on my headphones my my Air, AirPods and I just kind of disassociated and I watched this like comedy of errors of people getting up and down, going up and talking to the captain, coming back and like looking, looking around and, you know, and then, then taking uh, bags of coffee and putting them in the bathroom. <laughs> you know, that's what they'll do sometimes when it's really bad that they, they were like trying to come up with solutions and uh, people just walking and a le- lot of like the flight attendant walking, a lot of the like pressing the button to call the flight attendant and people talking to the flight attendant asking about this smell. <laughs> <laughs> and it was I was so glad when we landed. So I think the anxiety of that yeah. actually stopped the flow of the diarrhea. because <laughs> I was so anxious. Right. That actually was the cure. Right. So somehow that made, that made a mental block. It was like the a mental emodium that I needed <laughs> in that moment. But what a terrible! And I felt so bad for that person who had it on the flight. I mean, it was in the aisle, right. I guess. Right. Yeah. Which I I think, oh my goodness, because I I know that feeling, and yeah. you know, you have to when you you have to sit down on a flight, you can't get up. Right. So what do you do? <laughs> so Margaret, now we want to play a game with you and it's called had it or hit it. So I'm going to list some things. And if you don't like the thing, you'll say you've had it. And if you like it, you, you'll tell us that you would hit it. Oh my God. Welcome to had it or hit it. I would hit it. Had it. Had it. I hit it every day, sometimes twice a day. All right. So had it or hit it, George W. Bush. Hit it. And why, why would you hit George W. Bush now? I feel bad because I actually think he was an okay president. <laughs> it was like, really? You know, I bashed him so much when he was in office and I really <laughs> didn't like that administration and I was really furious. And he is a war criminal, but in terms of like, 
you know, <laughs> of people that have been in the White House, I actually think, oh, you know what? He wasn't that bad. Like he right. actually had a lot of a lot on his plate. Is that not the ultimate? Like I experienced the same thing when he was in office. I mean, I like injected John Stewart every day into my veins because I needed mm-hmm. to hear somebody say this is insane. And yeah. then Trump comes into office and he's so terrible, right? And so horrible. And then they trot out George W. Bush, who lives in Dallas now, and he paints portraits of immigrants. And I was like, oh, I forgot about right. him. I kind of liked him. So yeah. I can I can yeah. I can give a little bit of deference to him, but if I take my brain back to how they picked on gay people and immigrants. And granted, he's evolved from this, but it really, Mm -hmm. I still think that that's just one thing I can't forget because all of Of that homophobia is still brewing and, you know, seems to be horrible, much, much worse now than it even was then. Yeah, it does seem worse now. Yeah, it is worse now. And that's, he's part of that. He's the reason why it's so much worse now. Agree. So it's hard to, you know, look at it and completely like rewrite the historical accuracy. Right. Of it. But yes, you're right. You know, pumps, we struggle so much as women. I know you battle with a bra constantly. Always. And when we were younger, I just battled with menstrual cramps. I mean, horrific menstrual cramps. Now, although I still have periods, I'm experiencing kind of perimenopausal symptoms like brain fog. Well, our friends at Happy Mammoth have this amazing product called Hormone Harmony. I took three capsules this morning. You take three per day and it can help no matter where you are in your cycle, if you are having really bad periods, perimenopausal, or really old like you and full-blown <laughs> menopausal, Hormone Harmony is incredible. It's such a great product. I have noticed a huge change in my energy and brain fog since I've started using it. I feel like a million bucks. Listener, you can get your first bottle of Hormone Harmony for 15% off if you use the code had it on the checkout page. Go to happymammoth.com and enter the promo code had it on the checkout page. Valid till November 30th. Okay, had it or hit it, cats. Oh, hit it. I love cats. <laughs> I have many cats. I love all my cats. Um, they are so perfect and beautiful, oh. and they're very different from dogs. Um, and I'm, I'm just in love with them. You have to like go with, go at their pace and it's always on their terms, but I'm so, I, my life has been so enriched by all the cats that I have. Oh, oh that's, that's sweet. really sweet. Okay. Had it or hit it geriatric politicians. Had it. Oh my God. <laughs> Same. Margaret. Had it. I've had it. Had it. I mean, it's, uh, it, I, it's so bad. I, I mean, all of the Mitch McConnell, I mean, the Diane Feinstein of it all. Agree. Yes. And, you know, it's just like, please, well, you know, why don't, yeah, it's just bad. It's bad. It's bad. And here's something I'm going to say that I don't think people are really talking about. The left side of the country or the progressive side of the country or the democratic side of the country needs to acknowledge and learn from the Ruth Bader Ginsburg lesson. Right. She stayed in. Mm-hmm. And now, and now Roe was overturned and she stayed in and she should have resigned. And mm-hmm. women in our state, we live in abortion ban America. And there's a lot mm-hmm. of shit going on for women that don't have the same freedoms that Pumps and I had when we were younger in this state. And so I think that we have to learn lessons that this is a very critical time in our nation's history. You see fascism on the rise. You see people Mm -hmm. celebrating stupidity and ignorance and banning books. And I just think the Joe Bidens, the Mitch McConnells, the Dianne Feinsteins, I think it's just time to make the country bigger than your personality. There are plenty of Democrats that can run. And and of course, I would vote for Joe Biden again, but I don't Mm -hmm. think it's right for him to run again. I think it's somewhat selfish. It's my opinion. Mm -hmm. Is power that intoxicating? I mean, it must be to want to just hold on to it. And I'm I'm not really talking about Biden on that, but like the McConnell's like, is it so intoxicating that you're not even going to enjoy your life at all? You're just going to do this forever and die on a podium. I I mean, is that what it is? The, The power? Well, if you think about like politics, it really is another avenue of celebrity. It's right. not necessarily this ideological fight. I mean, to some extent, they can frame it that way. But also, I think it really deeply is a thirst for fame and that kind of power or the cult of personality power. And so um, 
politicians are really just another avenue for that sort of like human desire to want to be exceptional. And in celebrity, there's that sort of thing of like where if you keep being celebrated, then retirement doesn't seem so appealing. Right. I think uh, it's just a really it's a really difficult question, you know, especially because we're for progressive who you need politics to get things done right. to make society really right itself. It's very hard. OK. Had it or hit it rehab. Oh, um, hit it. I love rehab. If I could live in rehab, I would. I love it. <laughs> it's so great. So what you do is you just wear Ugg boots and like juicy couture, like um, velour track suits yes. all day. Yes. Um, you don't have to wear any makeup. You don't have to do anything. You Your meals are presented to you. There's snack time. Um, you get to do, you get to make crafts. Um, there's hot people around and, um, I love it. They'll give you a horse sometimes. Um, uh, it's great. Like you just go in, they take your phone. You can't talk to anybody except for the people that you're around who are usually really sexy and really nice. And, um, sometimes people are like really crazy and that's another form of entertainment. Right. Um, <laughs> I love rehab. I stayed in rehab <laughs> for a year and nine months, which is like you go in for 28 days, but I'm like, mm -mm, not enough for me. Like, I <laughs> love it. The only problem with rehab is it's so expensive. Yes. I spent all my money in rehab, but that's OK. Yes. Because it was worth every penny. And I'm, you know, still benefiting from it today. And uh, I love I, I just love the concept of it. I think that we need to be able to check out of life sometimes to Agreed. deal with our mental health. Agreed. So I agree. I, I, had, I love it. My <laughs> husband's been to rehab five times as he always jokes around. Can you go through one podcast episode without saying I've been to rehab five times? And so coincidentally, I've been to five family weeks. And mm -hmm. I remember when I was at the height before I understood the disease component of his what I perceived as cruelty. Um, I didn't really quite understand that yet. So his first rehab stint, I'm there and they're like, okay, write a letter to yourself with your left hand. And so it's your non-dominant hand. So you can write a letter to little Jennifer. And I was such a bitch, Margaret, for like two years. I'd be like, yeah, I want to go to rehab and write a letter to little Jennifer for about <laughs> six months. But I will say this, everybody that finds themselves in rehab or however many visits it takes, or you were there for a year and nine months, it's hard to be an adult. And a lot of times, a lot of us arrive at adulthood very broken. And then all mm -hmm. of a sudden, we have to face these very adult decisions that we're ill-equipped to face. And so I very much am with you on rehab and rehabilitation and second chances and redemption. And I think that is just a beautiful, it's a beautiful time to be alive where people are embracing that and, and welcoming that into adulthood. It's it's beautiful. It's it's like a way to sort of sidebar into like a way to like live that is really comfortable, especially like if you're like dealing with the heavy duty drugs and alcohol, like to get away from that and get away from all the things that make you want to do those things and like really assess, like, sh you know, should I be doing this? Like, what am I actually doing with my life? It's a really it's like it's a beautiful process. But some of the things are really, I think um intense like i vaped so much in rehab i mean that, that's a, <laughs> I think, like when you vape it's so i don't do it anymore i'm so glad i don't that's like <laughs> one thing when you go to rehab just try not to vape because it's really hard to stop doing it when you get out <laughs> okay and our last one and we love to throw this one around had it or hit it gender reveal parties had it i mean it, it, why why like also why are you putting that on a person you don't even know yet right like what is that about like we don't even like we don't even know who this is gonna be and why and should it matter like and it's just like just have a party that you're having a child like you're already going to be celebrating that's great but it's very stressful. And then people like start fires. Like, <laughs> like totally. People, people die. Explosions. Yes. People die. Like why? I mean, it's just to me, it 
it's so needless. And also, I, I don't know, I'm I very like restrict or restrict myself from sort of gender identifying things anyway. Like I think right. it's so to me, it's it's really meaningless in my own like everyday life. Um, but it's also weird when you're trying to put that on somebody that's not even born yet. <laughs> right. right. And I'm hoping that, you know, I think the millennials started this and I'm hoping that Gen Z, I have, you know, two Gen Z kids and particularly my 20 year old, his whole group of friends at Syracuse University, they are all about like eviscerating gender and gender roles, which I think is really cool. And so hopefully Gen Z gobbles up the millennials on this gender reveal thing and it's over once and for all because I have had it, Margaret. Yeah, I've had it. I've had it like with any, but any of those kinds of things, like I don't really like showers. I don't really like weddings. I don't Same, really yeah, like bachelor or bachelorette pad parties. No. All of that stuff is so weirdly like uh, it's it, it just because I've been married. I've had all and I didn't enjoy any of it. It's very stressful. Like the only thing that's not stressful is like a funeral. <laughs> then, like, then you can really sit back and enjoy <laughs> <laughs> but anything leading up to that, I don't want it. <laughs> I mean, that is Stress probably reframe. the best thing I've heard all month. Yeah. Right there. <laughs> 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 Margaret, you are an absolute treat. I have enjoyed this time with you so, so much. And I can't thank you enough for joining us on our little podcast here. Thank you so much. It was great having you. Thank you. Uh, Bye-bye. Best thing I've heard (laughs) is sit back and enjoy the funeral. Sit back. Stress-free. Totally (laughs) stress-free. You know, she is kind of right. Because when you're the bride or you're having the baby, you have to entertain everybody. You have to make sure everybody. Totally. So, I mean, I get it. I think she's on to something. A funeral, you can kind of slip in. Yeah. Depending on your closeness to the The deceased. The deceased. Yeah. You can decide if you can middle row it or you can kind of back row it. (laughs) You know, I mean, like, she's got a really good point. She's got a great point. And I think the problem with the weddings, the showers, the bachelor parties, the gender reveal parties, is they all are lacking in real authenticity at this point, at least from my lens and the ones that I've been to lately. Almost all the weddings I've been to in the last five years, every single one of them are divorced. (laughs) And they were all highly produced for social social media. media. I think that's the problem with the gender reveals. I didn't, I I think that I don't care how much Gen Z gobbles up the millennials. Social media is here to stay. I just think it's, I think all that shit's for social media. I want to, I only gender reveal I want to go to is for like a transgender no, I'd be down with that. that child because they're getting beat up so absolutely much right now by these whack jobs. And so that's something to celebrate. Agree. Yes. Listener, I enjoyed Margaret Cho so much. I love that dry sense I did of too. Humor. How about the plane? People thought going to the pilot thinking they oh were going to have to. <laughs> and just how she beamed at how proud she is of her cats. cats. I know. Darling. Almost made me not hate cats. I know. I did. She was so on fire for her cats. And I felt it was so earnest I did and too. pure. Yeah. I couldn't tell her what an absolute uncontrollable cunt you are regarding <laughs> cats. And I so and I did that because I care about you and I wanted Margaret to like you. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. You're Hopefully she won't listen to the tail end of this, <laughs> this episode. She won't listen to the close. She'll be like, I hate that fucking cat. She's stupid. She gets scammed. <laughs> Dumbass. Yeah. And um Angie's ex-husband, if you're listening, I'm going to get that fucking <laughs> iCloud back. Kylie and I are getting it back. We're on to you. Right now. Okay. All right. Listen up, <laughs> listener. We got to go. Kylie and I have got to go save Pumps' fucking iCloud. <laughs> Hot shit tour, link in bio, Patreon link in bio. All the shit is in the link in the bio on all the socials that we browbeat about all the time. Pumps, tell them. We will see you next Tuesday or Thursday or both.